Hi everyone, welcome to the 9th Annual OpenZoo Fest Developer Summit. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I'm Matt Ahrens, and I'll be talking to you about the state of the project and the conference. Let me, there we go. All right, so first off, I wanted to thank everyone who helped to make this uh, conference possible. Um, there are a lot of people that worked on it behind the scenes. Um, so I wanted to thank uh, Karen for project management, uh, Victoria for helping us do the event management, um, working with all of our, with, with all of our sponsors to uh, make sure that we received their money and they received all the benefits that we uh, promised them. And I wanted to thank uh, Aaron Holding, who once again, for many years running, has designed the logo for the conference. Um, I don't know if any of you recognize this. Uh, it took me a little while to place it as well. But the, uh, the thing that's depicted here is called the Eye of Diablo. It's uh, on top of Mount Diablo here in the Bay Area, and um, it's a beacon of light that uh, was lit right uh, at the beginning of the pandemic as a symbol of hope and healing and strength uh, for those who have uh, been impacted by the pandemic, which is you know all of us, I think. Uh, so they light it every Sunday night, um, and uh, we thought that you know it's a great symbol of the times uh, and also um, the idea of bringing people together uh, that, that this conference does as well. Um, and last, uh, I wanted to thank uh, Prakash for um, helping with the IT um, and tech stuff. Next slide. Okay. So um, on to our sponsors. So I wanted to thank uh, all of our sponsors, starting with our diamond sponsor, Delphix, which is also my employer. Um, when we do this lo conference live, we usually have the employees stand up and we all clap for them. Um, maybe we can kind of do that virtually. I think that there's a feature in Zoom where you can like uh, raise your hand. So maybe we can have folks, uh, it's under like uh, reactions. Let me find it online. I can't even find it on me. Maybe because I'm, uh, oh, there we go. Paul, Tony, Cameron, thank you, Manoj. Um, I think maybe because I'm presenting, I can't react to my own presentation. Um, tons of folks here raising their hands. Um, thanks for, uh, whoops. Thank you um, all the Delphix employees and thank you Delphix for uh, sponsoring the conference. Next up, I wanted to thank uh, our platinum sponsor, Racktop. Uh, anyone here from Racktop, please raise your hands. Thank you very much. And we can give them a virtual round of applause. Next up, Sonetto, uh, sponsoring the Gold Plus level. Um, Sonetto, any employees from Sonetto here? Thank you very much. And at the Gold level, uh, Datto and IX Systems. Thank you. Any employees from Datto and IX Systems here? Yeah, see a bunch there. Thank you. All right. And then sponsoring at the silver level, OS Nexus and Open Drives. Thank you very much. And at the bronze level, FreeBSD Foundation. Giving them a chance to raise their hands. Yes. Thank you for clapping and raising your hands. I know this is a little cheesy, um, but we're, we're trying to, you know, Pull everyone in. Um, and, and I wanted to thank again all of our sponsors who have stuck with us through the, through the pandemic. Um, there have been many of these sponsors have been with us for many, many years, and we really appreciate your continued financial support of the conference um, this year as we hold it online once again. Hopefully, the last fully online OpenZFS Developer Summit, uh, we, can, we, can, we can all hope. So uh, I wanted to take a minute to uh, talk about the state of the project um, and take a moment to look back at what we have accomplished um, over the past year. So I reused this slide from uh, last year. Last year we were talking about new features coming up in OpenZFS 2.0, which really, really will be released in 2020. And it was. So um, congratulations to everyone who contributed to that. Um, it was a, a huge release. Um, adding FreeBSD support, uh, lots of features that we talked about at um, last year and previous year's uh, developer summits that I've highlighted here. Um, we also uh, released OpenZFS 2.1 um, with a huge new feature of DRAID, which uh, was talked about, I think, for five plus years uh, running at the OpenZFS developer summit. So I think it goes to show that, um, you know, there are, sometimes it takes us a while, Sometimes it takes uh, a lot of different companies, a lot of different contributors to pick up uh, this work, but um, I'm really inspired by 
the D-Raid project and um, people working across, you know, I think at least three major companies um, contributing, uh, you know, picking up that work over the years um, and finally getting it in um, for everyone to use. So I, I think that that's really inspiring and it gives me hope even when I see projects that are like big projects that are just starting out and you wonder, is it ever going to get, is it ever going to be done? Is it ever going to get integrated? Um, and we have some great examples of that actually happening. Um, also, uh, in the past year, in the past three years, we've been having these monthly OpenZFS leadership meetings. So these are open meetings. Uh, anybody can come and attend, uh, contribute. And I think that this has really helped the um, project to uh, you know, maintain cohesion throughout the other you know, 11 months of the year when we aren't having this conference. Um, and um, and uh, I invite you all to attend all the details on that later on. So uh, now I'll try to prognosticate a little bit. What does the future hold? What does the next year uh, and couple years hold for the project? Um, so there's a lot of work in progress uh, in terms of new features for OpenZFS, new development. Um, and uh, um, a lot of these are in flight and, and uh, you know, hopefully they all land. Maybe they all will, maybe they won't in the next year. Um, there's, it takes a lot of effort uh, for developers to implement these, test them. Um, and, and upstream them into OpenZFS. So I, I really appreciate all that work and all of our you know, developers are, you know, they're, they're bringing OpenZFS, uh, you know, they're keeping OpenZFS alive and um, moving it forward as uh, you know, the industry changes. So I, I appreciate all the hard work that's being done on that front. There's also a lot of other things that need to happen for a release to happen and for the project to continue. So, um, a lot of this stuff goes on behind the scenes, uh, and we would like to uh, bring it out from behind the curtain a little bit. Um, so, you know, all those great uh, features could be implemented, um, but they need to be integrated into the code base. They need to be reviewed so they can be integrated. Um, they need to have somebody, you know, help them along and actually integrate it and, and make sure that those features are ready and done. That's kind of the role of the um, maintainers who are kind of like uh, shepherds for the pull requests. Um, so this is, uh, on that role, we've actually um, made some good progress, I think, in the past year. Um, I don't know it, how many of folks are aware, but I think uh, for the past, I don't know, how many years has the um, has, has ZFS on Linux existed? Like a lot of years, um, maybe eight years, eight, nine years. Um, uh, Brian Bellendorf has been basically the, the one-man show of um, maintainership of that repo. Um, and you know, he's, he's approved and integrated almost every PR. Um, but as of this year, we, uh, we've started to involve some more folks. So I'm really pleased that um, Tony, John, and Mark uh, have been uh, all contributing um, in terms of uh, helping people get their pull requests integrated, making sure that they get the reviews that they need, making sure that the PRs that we do integrate you know, are up to our high quality standards. Um, a lot of the other roles in here, you might, uh, you might notice are filled by just a handful of people from an even smaller handful of companies. So um, what I'd like to ask from the participants today is um, how can you help out? Um, we're going to have, uh, we're gonna make apprentice apprenticeships available. So the idea is um, if you would like to uh, help with the release um, process, uh, then, you know, Brian or whoever is in charge of the releases now will uh, take you under their wing and show you through the next release. And then for the following release, maybe you could be the next release lead. You could help us determine when the next OpenZFS release is, what's the content, how do we uh, keep the quality bar high. Um, that's a role that we would love to have help with. Um, there's also other roles associated with like this conference itself uh, that we would love to have folks help with. Um, and there's also smaller, you know, roles like taking notes at the monthly, at our monthly meetings, um, uh, and, as well as things like, um, you know, tri triaging issues that come in that are filed on GitHub, and then maybe providing a monthly report at our uh, leadership meeting every month. Um, so these are, a lot of these are roles that don't require expertise in like ZFS kernel programming. Um, 
there, some of these things just require kind of passing familiarity with, with the project and other things, you know, we need experts, people who are experts in um, different areas that are not programming, um, you know, like, uh, like uh, I'm seeing this conference could be a, a role that you could contribute to um, or serving on the program committee um, to help us uh, find um, and, and choose talks for this conference. Um, so we're gonna have a special discussion today led by Brian Bellendorf um, at noon Pacific time. Uh, that'll be during the lunch break. Uh, if you would like to learn more about the opportunities here um, or find out you know, what's really involved in these uh, and volunteer, uh, then uh, we'd love to chat with you then. Um, and uh, another way to kind of get involved is to come attend our Open ZFS um, leadership meetings, which are held monthly. The next one is going to be um, about four weeks from now, the 7th of December, uh, same time as this, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, and we send out tweets and emails about that on the mailing list, uh, usually the day before. The past, the future, but here we are today. Uh, what's happening today? Um, so we have a bunch of great talks, uh, and uh, we also have a bunch of breaks. So during the breaks, um, we're going to use the Zoom breakout rooms feature um, to, uh, to allow folks to just casual chit chat with um, other people from the community. Uh, we'll have, uh, we'll have uh, folks who are the speakers at the conference as well as some uh, notable community members who have volunteered to lead those discussions. So um, during the breaks, you'll see something pop up on your screen that's like, uh, you know, which breakout room would you like to join? And you'll see the names of the people who are leading the breakout rooms. Um, and uh, the folks who you know are not speakers, I've listed here with some of their interests. Um, I'll, I'll try to bring up the slide when we go to the breaks as well. All right, uh, so today we're having uh, the presentations and tomorrow we have a hackathon. The theme of the hackathon is quality. How can we improve the quality of the project and the quality of the OpenZFS code base? Um, so you might wonder like, how could I improve quality in just one day? Um, and and this, is a, this is a daytime business hours, at least business hours specific time um, hackathon, not a all night um, Mountain Dew fueled hackathon. Although your hackathon, your version of the hackathon may be fueled by Mountain Dew or other beverages. Um, we, uh, you know, eight hours is not a long time, but we do have a bunch of ideas about what could be done within that time. Um, around identifying bugs uh, that may have slipped through the cracks, um, reviewing pull requests. Uh, there's a bunch of older pull requests that uh, probably need just a little bit of work to for someone to pick them up and get them integrated. Um, so we'll have a special hackathon planning session uh, during lunch today after the um, volunteer opportunities one uh, at 1220 Pacific time. Uh, and that'll be led by George Wilson. Um, so you can see the schedule there for tomorrow. Uh, and we do have prizes. The prizes are uh, bug or insect themed. Um, so you have to come tomorrow and find out what those are. Uh, okay, uh, lastly, or close to lastly, um, this is a professional conference. Um, we, you know, we expect everyone to behave professionally. And a big part of that is, you know, being kind and being welcoming to people who may be new to the community. Um, We'll have lots of opportunities for folks to interact um, and, and put that into action. Um, and you know, just remember that people come from different backgrounds uh, and they may have different experiences coming to OpenZFS, coming to the programming world. Um, if you have any issues, uh, you can let us know. Uh, if you have any technical problems, um, get in touch with George and you can find us all on email or on the OpenZFS Slack. Uh, you should have received a link to the uh, how to join the OpenZFS Slack. Um, Questions. Uh, um, Alan had a, a, a more of a statement than a question, but uh, he noted that uh, many of the projects um, that have been integrated to OpenZFS in the past year um, have were actually started at hackathons, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, this this year, I mean, we would love to see. Uh, projects started at this hackathon as well. Um, I'd also love to see um, uh, changes 
to the community or changes to our processes um, that may start at the stack line. So for example, you know, we talked about uh, triaging bugs, finding bugs that have slipped through the cracks. Um, that would be a great project to do during the hackathon. Um, but uh, even better or more sustainable, longer term impactful um, activity might be to figure out what is the process to make sure that we do triage those bugs on an ongoing basis, not just uh, on the one day of the hackathon. So you know, maybe finding some way to measure um, and show metrics around uh, incoming bugs, bugs that have received atten attention um, and been, you know, answered or addressed or categorized uh, or not categorized um, might be a, a great addition to the project in terms of long-term um, uh, long quality. Arshad asks, being new to ZFS um, in this hackathon, could, we, could I do something like fix a simple spelling mistake? Um, I would say absolutely. Yeah, I mean, fixing spelling mistakes, typos, in documentation, in the code, in comments of the code, um, those would all be uh, great things, great additions to the project. And, um, you know, one of the great things about this hackathon is that it's, you know, it's, it's live. Uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's live, it's happening between people that are new to the project and people that have a lot of experience with the project. So you have the, you can, um, you know, the, the, what's involved with changing a spelling mistake might be conceptually very easy, but um, you know the process of actually making that happen with Git with pull requests uh, may not be obvious to you, and and we have folks that on hand that can help with those kinds of things. So hopefully, you know, you we can uh, teach you how to make those changes today, and then you can go on to make further spelling mistake improvements and other improvements um, in the future. Uh, yes, so uh, a couple of people noted there's a um, spreadsheet um, which is in the chat, uh, linked in the chat, um, that has some ideas in there, both of um, things in the quality theme as well as uh, new features and improvements. Um, if you'd like to get a jump on that uh, brainstorming, then take a look at that. <laughs> 